Let's talk about the place holding the world's most notorious pirate, Impel Down. I finally got around to reading this arc, and can I just say, this place is utterly full of torture, with multiple levels containing different types of torture for pirates who will never see the light of day. This place isn't just trying to be the world's greatest prison, it's trying to be hell. It's where Ace is being held and Luffy is just going to jump right in the middle of it. But seriously though, uh, this place is wildly inefficient. I can't imagine how much money is being spent on this place. And imagine the upkeep. It's, it's a lot of work for people who are never going to see the light of day. Impel Down, if you're going to torture people, I can think of way easier cost-effective solutions for you. Though I think that, at the very least, Impel Down acts as a method of decreasing less ambitious pirates from even trying anything. It didn't stop Luffy, though. It, uh, it didn't stop Ace, either. In fact, even with Garb trying to guide them in the right direction, Ace still ended up in Impel Down. It's interesting that Garp acts as a father figure to both Luffy and Ace, wanting Ace to follow in his footsteps and become a Marine. Though, as a faraway father figure, I think there are a few flaws with that plan, considering that Ace didn't even look like he was in a good condition when Whitebeard found him. Though it did get me thinking about how there's a lot of abandoned kids slash pirate father figures in One Piece. Yasop is a good example of that. And so is Dragon with uh, Luffy and Ace. During this conversation with Garp and Ace, it makes sense that Ace would have a lot of repressed emotions against Dragon because look at the situation he's in right now. He's a very ambitious, capable pirate who has like a lot of connections to some of the strongest pirates alive right now. No wonder people want him dead. With uh, the only person that Ace can rely on being Whitebeard as a father figure, which can I say, like Whitebeard sounds pretty good right now. He's like protecting Fishman Island so that it doesn't go from bad to even badder of a situation over there in Zabaori. Whitebeard uh, cares about his crew. He is doing the same thing that Luffy is doing, which is fighting to save Ace. Buggy's crew wouldn't do that. His crew is aware that it would be a suicide mission to go and try anything. Impel Down is a literal representation of hell. Nobody even tries to hide it. I think everyone there, like, plays into the theatrics of it. This is a place where you do the job only because you enjoy it kind of place. And the only way Luffy even managed to get in is by having a lot of luck with Boa, hiding while trying to not be suspicious. Which it totally is. But it's interesting to see just how hard Boa changed as a character. Because there are essentially two sides of Boa in this character shift, right? One is the like threatening, uncaring force versus uh, the other half, which is this hopeless romantic character. If Sanji is the representation of lust with him going into simp territory, then Boa is the representation of love with her being a hopeless romantic character. But I like this balancing act where it adds complexity to Boa by having a softer side that is guarded by this like more dominant persona. Anyhow, as soon as we arrive to Impel Down, we are introduced to the guards of Impel Down. If Impel Down is hell, then the people who are sent there are like the most guilty sinners and the guards take up the role of like a devil carrying out punishments as a beacon of light to the outside world. In the case of Hannibal, I found it really interesting to see Impel Down for as inefficient as I was saying it was uh, to be this like beacon of justice to the people outside who might have been affected by piracy. That's also what I find interesting about Magellan. He's like replacing the previous person of Impel Down and Magellan acts as the person making sure that the punishment is sought out while also making sure that the punishment is properly scaled with a crime, which is not something the previous guard of Impel Down did. There's just a very interesting dynamic between Magellan and Hannibal, where both of them don't seem to think highly of each other until we see that both of them actually think really highly of each other. Even in the times where one of them says something and it comes off as rude or as a joke, I just found that to be a really interesting dynamic. Everyone's calling you diarrhea, man, and you just put up with it. It's disgraceful. 
Also, I just, I just love this joke. I don't know why. It's disgraceful. While we're talking about all the good guys of Impel Down, let's talk about these like weird animal things. Because when I saw these things, I was like, oh, it's like a minotaur guarding the maze kind of situation. I like the whole like beast guarding the cell vibe that they got going on. But I didn't think about the implications until it was revealed that these things are an awakened zoentite. So zoentypes are just like devil fruits that turn you into an animal. And I think an awakened zoentype is just like the full potential of that fruit, which feels like the same thing that Chopper had if he unlocked the monster form without the buster ball. But the idea of an awakened zoentype being an upgraded version of a zoentype makes me think of like the other devil fruits. What would other awakened fruits look like? I don't even know if there would be other awakened fruits because it makes sense to have an awakened zone type because if it's mimicking the animal, it's kind of like that animal was asleep and now it's actually awake. That's what it's trying to represent. And other types represent like concepts or objects. So it doesn't make sense to have an awoken concept. Plus it's the fact that all of the other types are already pretty strong. Like when it comes to Blackbeard's uh, shadow ability or an L's lightning, it's already overpowered. So I talked about the important good guys pretty much, but can I talk about the bad guys of Impel Down? I need to address something, right? Because I think One Piece has had a potential issue that it doesn't seem to like to address. And that is what I'm going to call the knockout trope. I don't think there's an actual word for it. I couldn't find it. And that's when uh, a villain is taken care of, but never actually taken care of. Like Pokemon, for example, has the like villains get knocked out saying, oh, we're blasting off again and then just leave leaving the area. But there's a problem to that, I think. For example, if you never truly deal with a villain, they're just gonna come back. That's what happens in Pokemon every single time. But if you lean too hard in the other direction and just kill off a character, then you don't really get to see that character anymore. And sometimes you want to punish a character, but not kill that character entirely. So I just assumed in One Piece that when characters got knocked out, they were out of the story. Like maybe we'll see a villain in a side story like uh, Wapol. After the knockout, Wapol starts like a little store and gets popular and makes toys now. But we don't see them come back into the main plot anymore. And then Impel Down happened. If there is going to be a blasting off again moment where we don't kill off the characters, then I think Impel Down is the solution to that problem. From a writing perspective, Impel Down is kind of like playing with your toys and saying, well, if I leave the villain out here, he'll just cause problems again. So I'll put him in the toy box and we'll reuse him later. And Impel Down is that toy box. The Impel Down arc is finally taking all of those toys out of the toy box. We're essentially revisiting every villain in one arc. And that was the moment when everything clicked. It's passing by a cell and seeing one of the villains and thinking like, oh, you're here too. And you're coming with me. Seriously, half of the entertainment of Impel Down for me was being able to see these characters who are villains have to team up with Luffy in order to escape Impel Down because nobody here could have done it alone. We get a strong introduction to Buggy this arc, which I found him absolutely charming. By the way, it introduces probably my favorite dynamic, which is the fact that these two are forced to work together. It's even better since it's Buggy who's the one who's going against the grain. He tries absolutely everything to backstab Luffy, but in the end just continually gets stuck with him. We also get introduced to Mr. Three to balance out Buggy's sanity, adding like one more brain cell into this equation. It was already cool to see Luffy having to pair up with other villains in order to escape Impel Down, but I didn't think about the fact that it would also mean that other villains would pair up with each other to escape Impel Down. And you know, as soon as I realized that Mr. Three was here, I felt a little joy for Bod Clay. Like the entire point of Impel Down is that this is a terrible, sad place and everyone's against you. So having Bon Clay be the closest thing to Luffy's teammate in a time where Luffy has nobody to rely on was some much needed comfort. 
just hearing Bon Clay say, I'm your friend, Straw Boy. It's like, bam, I'm invested. It's golden. This dynamic is beautiful. It makes me want to cry. And I'll talk about that in a bit. But all right, throughout this arc, Luffy is going in there. He's collecting all the villains. It's starting to create this like snowball effect because it felt like we were always moving forward. And I think that might be the result of the arcs being pulled more and more tightly which isn't something that I felt as strongly in anything of the East Blue Saga, because now we're really snowballing here. We have the weird monkey hybrid things, which I like. They're pretty neat. I got no questions there. I think monkeys are cool. And then we have these weird creatures, which are sphinx. Are these Zoan types? I don't think so. Do these creatures just exist in one piece? And why are they here? I think that the onslaught of enemies is just meant to convey that going through this arc is not going to be easy, especially when it comes to Magellan. Magellan is possibly Luffy's biggest threat. Like, he can't fight Magellan like he could fight an L. And even then, we are being shown how much Luffy is just outclassed. He landed one hit on Magellan and that killed Luffy. Which, to be fair, bad move on Luffy's part. He played that one really badly. But I think that we're able to see this as extreme desperation. If this was the only thing that he could come up with, it's showing that, like, Luffy is on thin ice. I think this fight is just one example of what that old lady said in Amazon Lily. That Luffy is going to be an ant in a storm and that he's not going to be able to hold his own here. If anything, Luffy is in even more danger than anyone else. And I think that becomes apparent when he's locked up in a cell full of poison. When a prisoner tells Luffy, how can you save anyone when you can't even save yourself? In the furthest place from safety, Luffy can be away from everyone he cares about, poisoned and getting closer to death. It is beautiful that Bon Clay shows up, the one friend that Luffy has in Impel Down. And I like how Bon Clay not only ties back to Luffy as it's that connection back in Alabasta that saves him, but how Bon Clay also ties into future events like the whole Eva plotline. And it is this strong dynamic that finally gets its payoff it deserves when Eva comes in saying that it's rare to see a dying person worried about someone else. That is indicative of both of the characters. Just the idea of the flower of friendship blooming in a place like this. The frozen, heartless place of hell. It's just like, oh my, my heart, it melts. How uh, Bon Clay beaten up and freezing goes over and frees Luffy from the cell. How Bon Clay struggles to fight all of the wolves, encircling them both. How Luffy uses Conqueror's Hockey to take down all of the wolves. How Luffy, despite being so close to death, now having no agency of his own, begs for his friend to be helped first. This is an amazing dynamic for Impel Down. And of course, that brings us to Impel Down, level 5.5. In this destructive, suffering hellscape contains the hidden layers of New Kama Land. And instantly, we're expanding on the world building. We're tying Bon Clay to Eva, Eva to Dragon, Dragon to Luffy, as well as having like an actual structure to the breakout portion of Luffy's plan. You want to save Ace and break out of Impel Down? Well, you're going to need help. And New Kama Land is the answer. You need to remove that whole poison? Eva can do that. And to be fair, it's not just like a clean reset switch. Like we don't remove all of the consequences, kind of. It does have long lasting effects, right? Like it's going to take 10 years off of Luffy's life. And there's still a large chance that it won't work. But on the other hand, I don't think you could really bargain when you're dying. So, um... <coughs> I think that 10 years of your life statement is interesting because I'm wondering how much lifespan will play into the role of the story. In chapter 100, we're like mimicking Luffy's execution. Back in Thriller Bark, Usopp was saying how he was worried about Luffy's life. So we might be building to something. As a bit of a side note, we've been getting these small hints of Dragon and the rebellion he's been up to. And I want to talk about that in relation to Eva, with Eva mentioning how, as a miracle worker, there have been
have been civilizations restored through miracles Eva has granted. Essentially saying that even with nations that have been torn apart, all I did was focus their will to live, right? And that kind of implies that Eva has resurrected civilizations before. Civilizations that could now potentially be a part of Dragon's Rebellion, which holds really interesting long-term consequences. As for Luffy's whole dying situation, I think the strawberry on top was just how Bon Clay reacted to all of this. How at the start, people were thinking, oh, you're cheering for your friend? That's a little bit weird. You'll get tired out eventually. Only to have it come around when hours later, Bon Clay is still cheering. Another beautiful moment of that like flower of friendship blooming in a place like this. And then Luffy comes out and he just straight up looks like a monster. Like, what is that? <laughs> sure, like Luffy looty tunes his way back to normal, but like, ew, like, look at him. This has like creepy pasta vibes, you know? All right, so there are many layers of Impel Down, and a lot of them are just for torturing people. But I think there's a lot more to these layers. There are layers to these layers. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have pointed out and said that this place has a lot of visual similarities to Dante's Inferno. But what's interesting to me is that the sixth layer of Dante's Inferno is assigned to those who are guilty of heresy. Essentially, the people on the upper layers might be bad, but it's mostly just hurting themselves. In terms of One Piece, the upper layers are used for those whose actions aren't against the world government. Like Buggy's up here because he's just like looting and destroying and pillaging towns. Mr. Three ends up here because he's just a pawn in a much bigger picture. But the sixth layer seems to be made for those who oppose the world government. In the story of Dante's Inferno, the sixth layer was dedicated to heresy. Essentially anyone who is against or opposes God. And guess what? The sixth layer of Impel Down is the same. It's used to hold Ace, a person who is uh, connected to Whitebeard, one of the most powerful and well-known pirates alive, actively opposing the world government as we speak. It holds Jimbe, a past warlord of the sea, who is currently opposing the world government by not being a part of its war. It holds Crocodile, who not only wanted to be king of the pirates, but also wanted to overthrow Alabasta and get an ancient weapon, which I'm sure wasn't done with the best intentions towards the world government. And as a side note to the sixth layer, Crocodile wants to kill Whitebeard. Not just Crocodile. So many people just as strong, if not stronger than Crocodile. Like some that we might have never heard of or will hear of also want to kill Whitebeard. I think this showcases the prominence Whitebeard has over the world of One Piece. He's like the last stand of this old retired generation of pirates who are still in a completely different league. Let's transition back into the Warlords of the Sea because I don't think I ever mentioned this, but hiring pirates? Um, yeah, I don't know who came up with that idea, but the world government really messed up on hiring pirates because it is not working out for you. Some of the warlords like Mihawk and Boa are impartial to the war. They don't care. Boa's just doing it for Luffy's sake and Mihawk is just there because he wants to beat people up or something. Jinbei, on the other hand, was completely against the whole idea considering what we know about Whitebeard and what he's done. No wonder Jinbei's against the war. And I don't know what Blackbeard is up to. When he got there, we barely saw an interaction between Blackbeard and Luffy because, again, we're just moving so fast, we don't really have the time to just stop and have a battle right now. But what is Blackbeard up to? Like, Ace clearly wasn't his goal because he was originally going to go after Luffy, but even then, if he was going to become a Warlord of the Sea, that status is going to be thrown away after the events of Impel Down. Originally, back in post in Islavi, I think, I predicted that Blackbeard was going to try to challenge Whitebeard now that he has the black hole fruit. <gasps> he would, like, arrest him, and then they would, like, go back to, like, Whitebeard, and then Blackbeard would be like, aha, it's a trap, and then kills uh, everyone there or something, or wants to, and then they, like, fight over there, you know? They fight on Whitebeard ship, and Luffy is somehow there, too. I don't know. With the entire event of the war going on, though, I think that Blackbeard might be shifting his plans and instead getting the last person he needs is impel down and then using the war to his advantage to take down Whitebeard for good. Similar to what everyone else was thinking in the sixth layer. 
After the whole event of Impel Down level 5.5, we now get our act together, right? Like, Eva and Jimbei are the only brain cells keeping Luffy out of danger. The entire goal is now just to leave. It's like, oh, Ace is actually in Marineford? Now our goal is just to get to Marineford. After the whole event of Impel level 5.5, and now knowing Ace is gone, the entire theme changes from not only a breakout slash rescue story, but also like a chase after this character kind of story. In terms of escaping, we see characters like Jimbei and Crocodile wonderfully improvising and taking over a warship, while others like Bon Clay go in for another act of self-sacrifice similar to the one in Alabasta. And what's fascinating to me is that even though this is the end of Impel Down, there is still Marineford. This isn't over. The war in Marineford is going to be huge. Everyone is here, even Jonathan from the GA filler arc. That's how you know this means something. But we have like Aokiji and Kizaru. We have all the warlords. This place is full of marines and anyone can show up. Anything can happen. All of it is like being broadcasted and this shows how it would have been even more pointless for Luffy to go in alone. This detour to Impel Down might have just saved Luffy from what would otherwise have been an even bigger death sentence. Now it's not an ant going into a storm, it's more like a colony of ants going into a storm. But at least he has a chance. Bucky also has just like a ton of potential. Villains don't seem to hate him as much as like villains hate Luffy, along with the fact that like Buggy's been gathering more and more people during this arc, which might also have longer lasting effects. Maybe he won't even need his old crew. That could just be like Alveda's crew. But ultimately what's got me utterly interested though is Whitebeard. He is actively engaging in a dramatically altering event. No matter which way the tides go, there is going to be a ripple effect across like Fishman Island and Marijua and the world government and it'll affect piracy as a whole and even individual pirates like Ace and Buggy and Blackbeard and Luffy. And ultimately, what I realized is that these are dominoes that we have been setting up since Drum Island and Marineford is where it'll end. Also, what is a... Uh... What is a One Piece? What's what's becoming King of the Pirates and all that? I keep hearing that a lot, but I mean, this is a story about getting Ace, am I right? <laughs> King of the Pirates stuff, that is so four, five arcs ago. We're not even remotely talking about that anymore. What treasure? Ace is the true treasure in our hearts, right? That's why we're going over there to save him or whatever. Okay, 